Well, good morning, everybody. Um, I think we've just gone live. I think um, a number of people are just joining at the moment. So perhaps if we wait just for a few seconds before we get started. So please bear with us. Okay, well, perhaps we could get started now. Um, good morning, everybody, and a very warm welcome to this session on China's Greater Bay Area, creating extraordinary opportunities. And I think it's a fantastic um, title for what we're going to be talking about. Um, my name is Stephen Phillips, and I head up a team at Invest Hong Kong, a department of the Hong Kong government that helps both international and mainland companies both set up and grow in Hong Kong. And the Greater Bay Area is one of the most exciting things that we talk to um, companies about all around the world. Um, this morning, I'm joined by a fantastic panel who will offer us all some insights into different aspects of the Greater Bay Area. Um, I must apologize on behalf of Jane Sun, who isn't able to join us, um, but between us, we'll cover off some of the areas that James was going to talk about. Perhaps I could just briefly set the scene on what the Greater Bay Area is. Um, it is an area in southern China comprising nine cities in Guangdong province, plus the two special administrative regions of Hong Kong and Macau. It's already a very vibrant region, as I'm sure you all know, and its economy is already roughly the 10th or the 11th largest on a global level. So it's significant economically already. The area is home to 72 million people with the highest GDP per capita um, in the whole of China. And it's also home to many of China's most innovative companies. And of course, sitting within the GBA, you have Hong Kong with its world class international financial center and allied professional services. The vision for the Greater Bay Area is to really see this area flourish as one of the leading clusters of innovation and financial services on a global level. And indeed, I go as far as to say that this probably is the most significant economic development initiative on the planet. So I think lots of opportunity, lots of opportunity that will come in the months and years ahead. And this morning, we'll try to bring some of those opportunities to life for all of you. Um, if after that day you would like to have a chat about what Greater Bay Area might mean for your business, do feel free to get in touch with any of us. Um, I'm pretty sure you can find us all on LinkedIn. So I'll leave this at that in terms of scene setting. And perhaps now we can hear from some of my fellow panelists on their perspectives on what the Greater Bay Area might mean for your business. So, Winston, maybe I could start with you. Um, obviously, the Greater Bay Area Initiative is a national policy. Um, perhaps you could just share with us how you see GBA fitting into other national policies. Right. Hello. Um, I, I was born in Hong Kong, but when you see me, I'm actually sitting in uh, Beijing now. Um, I think to understand the significance of Greater Bay Area, we really have to look at it from a global perspective before we come back to the national perspective. One way to look at it is if we look at the recent U.S. elections, the, the depolarization between the blue states and the red states. Imagine a mental exercise if Calif the state of California in just one city, New York City, would succeed from the U.S. Now, it would not be too much of an exaggeration to say that U.S. will almost become a second, a second-rate nation, without California, and New York City. 
So um, now to some extent is to be more precise, you don't need the entire state of California. If you just remove the San Francisco to LA corridor and the tri-state area of, of New York from US, US will become almost a second rate nation. So that give, really bring us to the significance of regions more than nations. Now, the, the power of the Greater Bay Area is New York City plus Silicon Valley plus LA combined in one metro area that you can commute within, within a daily commute. So the Greater Bay Area is unparalleled in the world except maybe Greater Tokyo. So that is how significant it is, Great Bay Area, to the whole national competitiveness, the whole national development of China. Now, if you look at our neighbors, if you look at the economic strains of Japan, it's really concentrated in Greater Tokyo. And South Korea is really Greater Seoul. Because China is a lot bigger, so it's not quite that, but still, Shenzhen is really the center of innovations of China. So now with that in mind, of course, there are other important regions in China, such as the Yangtze River Delta, and, and then the Greater Beijing, and the Qingdu Chongqing area, and so on. But none of these are you know, uh, perhaps as innovative as Greater Bay Area, as, as concentrated uh, in a, a single metro area. Uh, as as Great Bay Area, uh, so with that, I would say that it is really uh, indispensable and pivotal to the national development of China. Uh, Winston, you said that you're sitting in Beijing now, but originally from Hong Kong. Um, how do you see Hong Kong fitting into the overall development of the GBA? And um, what that might that mean for foreign companies looking to tap into this huge marketplace? Well, I, I think the, the the development of China has benefited from a historical accident of Hong Kong under British common law and therefore a world financial centers. If you look at the financial centers in the world, they are all under British common law jurisdiction, New York, London, and Hong Kong. And as much as they've tried, Tokyo and Seoul never succeeded in, in becoming real financial centers. So it is, I think, um, very clear that Hong Kong will continue to play a role as a key financial center of China. However, um, as we've seen in Xi Jinping's speech you now in the 30th anniversary of Pudong, China has been trying to make Shanghai an alternative or an additional financial center for China as the hatch is bad. You can't blame them, but it's not so easy, right? Because you know, Shanghai is, is not under British common law. You now to try to introduce that in limited ex extent to Shanghai is not so easy. And Shanghai, like Hong Kong, is within the, the Great Chinese Firewall. So it's not so simple. So Hong Kong still has an edge. Uh, and, but, but China is trying to introduce maybe some British common law, Hong Kong law in a limited scale, maybe the, in the Qinghai district of Shenzhen. So there are some movements. So clearly financial centers. And secondly, I think which is not as well discussed is a really a provider of a knowledge, really a knowledge and human capital center uh, for Great Bay Area. If you look at the overall configuration of China, the Beijing and Shanghai are the creators of human capital, the best universities in, Ch in Shanghai. Zhenzhen is the key destination of human capital. Zhenzhen attract all the capitals you know, from over China in Zhenzhen, but it's not a maker of talents. And, and Shenzhen realized that and is trying to attract um, many good universities 
to Shenzhen, one of which is Chinese University of Hong Kong Shenzhen campus. So we will be seeing perhaps more uh, uh, high educations in Hong Kong, some of the best in China, you know, in addition on parallel to those in Beijing, setting up shops in, in, the, in the broader Greater Bay Area. So that's one. Now, coming to the foreign companies in China, um, using Hong Kong as a beachhead for China, that's been happening for a long time. Of course, a lot of foreign companies are setting up shops in, in Shanghai as the you know, headquarters for, for China and whatnot. I think there are two interesting developments that distinguish Hong Kong. One is if you are a, a company domiciled in Hong Kong, even if you are a foreign uh, company registered in Hong Kong, when you set up uh, operations in China, it's possible that you could um, get you know, legal arbitrations in Hong Kong rather than China. And that has not been approved yet, but is quite likely to be supported. So that make you know, Hong Kong domicile companies having a special edge in the Greater Bay Area. That's one situation. The other is a, a role reversal. In the past, Hong Kong has been a, a beachhead for foreign companies to go into China. But now a lot of Chinese companies are trying to use Hong Kong as a beachhead, as a base to go to the world. In fact, Invest Hong Kong uh, has helped many uh, mainland companies set up shops in Hong Kong. Now, mainland companies, they are not as skilled, experienced in, in going global. And they may benefit from the, the, the experience of a lot of foreign companies doing business all around the world. So it's possible that Hong Kong could be marketplace where mainland Chinese companies and foreign companies can partner together to go and you know, invest around the world, including in Belt and Road countries. Great. Well, thanks, Winston. Um, Edward, maybe we could turn to the sort of tech and innovation side now. Um, another big element of the Greater Bay um, vision. Perhaps you could share your thoughts on where the biggest opportunities lie, what sort of verticals there are, and also perhaps distinguish the particular role of Hong Kong as the International Innovation Center um, from that hotbed of um, innovation that Winston's already referred to in Shenzhen, but of course in the other cities too. Yeah, uh, thank you, Stephen. Um, as you know, uh, uh, Shenzhen and the surrounding areas has been developing uh, rapidly over the last several decades into a major hub for technology and technology-enabled innovations. Many people sort of compare Shenzhen with the Silicon Valley in the U.S. For right, for wrong. Uh, along along the time, along the process, uh, Shenzhen has keep given birth to a large number of uh, very te uh, capable technology companies. I think for uh, many of us, uh, you know, we, we know companies like Huawei, uh, Tencent, uh, DJI, uh, and many others, right? Uh, B BYD and so on, uh, many others. And they epitomize the advancement of technology uh, in Shenzhen and also the surrounding areas uh, over the last several decades. And uh, this base of capability is, uh, uh, is very unique uh, because it's not only about the specific companies, but also the ecosystems that these companies have built surrounding them. And it's, it's really a combined effort of the companies themselves, i.e. the entrepreneurs, but also the local governments. The local governments have been very proactive and supportive and supportive of uh, the growth of many of these companies, even when they were very small. And they were, when they were startups, they provide a lot of support. This governance model has proven to be very effective over the last uh, uh, several decades. And I personally believe that it will continue to, to be very effective going forward. Of course, the context is also evolving. Uh, one is that uh, is, is no longer just Shenzhen or Dongguan 
it is now we're talking about the whole Greater Bay Area, which is the whole region, including Hong Kong and Macau. And that will have a much bigger combined power than just one or two cities alone, right? Two is that we are entering into, in China in particular, we're entering, entering into a new era of uh, disruptive technologies. Whereas in the past, uh, when I say past, meaning perhaps uh, you know, a decade or so, um, uh, especially with the uh, introduction of the wireless internet, uh, many of the Chinese tech companies really embraced that as a technology, on top of which they created uh, many different types of innovations that we see today. Uh, the first decades of internet, uh, the wireless internet have allowed many of these companies to emerge from nothing to now into something pretty significant. Uh, but we are only sort of touching, scarily actually, we're only touching the surface because China is now entering into yet another era of innovation that's epitomized or underpinned by a number of disruptive technologies that have, that's happening at the same time. And these are artificial intelligence, uh, Internet of Things, or IoT, as some people call them, of course, 5G. Uh, as, you, as many of you know, the Shenzhen has become the world's first uh, 5G uh, preference city. You know, it is omnipresent now, 100% 5G covered uh, in Shenzhen, the first city in, in China, the first city in the world. And, uh, and also blockchain, block, blockchain technology, on top of already a very strong base of technology resting on big data uh, that you know, China, the Chinese already built in the last decade or more. This will give rise to even more innovation or technology enabled innovation coming up from Shenzhen and the rest of Greater Bay Area going forward. And you know, one could expect, in my view, innovations, uh, new innovations coming out from verticals such as uh, robotics, automation, as I mentioned, artificial intelligence, uh, advanced manufacturing, and that kind of stuff. And so, you know, one would expect even a much more innovative and exciting landscape of innovators coming out uh, from the whole Greater Bay Area. And many of these companies uh, today uh, could be uh, uh, very small, uh, could be just startups. But in five years from now, 10 years from now, they could become very significant. And that's just a pattern that, of how we, you know, we've seen in the last decade or more uh, coming out from you know, Shenzhen and also the surrounding area. Now, the, what it will be the role of Hong Kong in this whole sort of technology innovation game? Because as we know, Hong Kong has been largely a trading port and also larger the financial center, which has served Hong Kong really well. However, Hong Kong has really missed in the past the opportunity to become an innovation center. Uh, for right or for wrong, we missed that opportunity. As a Hong Kong person, I would say, you know, that's too bad for us. Um, uh, but at the same time, you know, Hong Kong have built up a pretty decent capability in uh, uh, tertiary institutions, in particular universities. And uh, we have attracted some of the world-class professors, faculty members, researchers, uh, with some of the uh, very decent universities. And actually, some of the experiments that has been going on in Shenzhen and the rest of the Greater Bay Area were actually initially incubated or born of the Hong Kong ideas. Uh, and I believe that that will continue to be prevalent for us from the Hong, in, in Hong Kong for the rest of the Greater Bay Area. In other words, Hong Kong can play, certainly at the minimum, a leading role in the upstream R&D, uh, you know, ideas, new, new ideas, new generation of ideas, in particular through universities and leading researchers. And then perhaps the commercialization of the ideas can be done across, you know, the border in the Shenzhen, Guangdong, Guan, and other places in Greater Bay Area. That could be a good combination. But in my view, that's not only, that won't be the end game because once you form a uh, sort of collaborative relationship and people begin to work closer together, 
and when people feel comfortable about working together, in fact, I think the interactions will become more, more mutual. In other words, it will be multidimensional. It won't be just one way from Hong Kong to Shenzhen or from Shenzhen back to Hong Kong. It will be kind of like a multi multidimensional uh, cyclic picture, which in my view will generate much more synergies that will be more than just incremental increments, but will be a multiplicative sort of output. So I'm very hopeful of the future of GBA, in particular in the, from the standpoint of technology innovations. I'm very hopeful that Hong Kong will find its place, especially in upstream R&D efforts. I believe that over time, the ecosystem will become very resilient and extremely powerful. Great, well, thanks for that. Um, Fred, you've um, got a, a, a vast knowledge of sort of the media landscape within southern China and indeed China as a whole, uh, and of course Hong Kong. Um, it, it would be really interesting to hear how you see new opportunities emerging in GBA on the media fronts, um, but maybe also picking up on both things that Whitson and Edward have touched on. They've talked about talent about young entrepreneurs. Um, what, what are your thoughts on young people from all over the world getting engaged in GBA? Well, uh, thank you. I think the, for young people in GBA, um, we need to encourage them. The opportunity is the GBA, not just Hong Kong, because Hong Kong is only 7 million people here. So if you look at GBA, it's uh, 70 million there. And 40 years ago, there's not nothing when you cross the border there. But 30 years ago, they start to move. 20 years ago, the GBA is, uh, they have more business opportunity than Hong Kong. Uh, of course, the young people always can look at Hong Kong you have. A certain advantage, financing uh, institution and uh, legal and accounting or whatsoever, but uh, but the economic growth is really on the on cross the border side. Today, you 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 all know that the 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 whole world trading business, uh, China is uh, con consider is a fifty percent of the whole world trading there roughly. So I think for the young people, as you mentioned, the, the media side, uh, when you're talking about the 5G intellect of things, who use the bandwidth most is the media because uh, you can have a trillion dollar transaction in the Hong Kong bank, but just a, a couple of figures there. But you will have a couple movie going through the internet and uh, it's the picture that is using, utilizing all the bandwidth. So whenever the bandwidth there, which is already there for the last 10, 20, 30 years, the infrastructure is already there. And now you need this how to utilizing it. In order for the young people to find the opportunity is how do you utilizing the bandwidth, not just making a media uh, or entertainment film, but how do you use it to teach people how to utilize it to make different message? Uh, is a media become a language? Uh, you can, for example, you have elections. Uh, our, our Winston, Winston talking about uh, uh, presidential elections in the blue state, the red state. They are all depending on the media in the internet and how to uh, promote uh, promote the situation. And uh, obviously, uh, uh, not only just the, uh, uh, the election of the government or anything, but how to uh, develop the business. Uh, when you talk about the 5G, it was the Huawei. 30 years ago, when I go through the Shenzhen to see the Huawei, they already not only building Huawei, their own company. They make it like a whole campus with many buildings there. I said, who are these people in the bill, in each of those buildings? Student? Yes. It is a student, not actually students, engineer from each building is a different country. 
from a different country, they invite all the engineer to reside in Huawei in Shenzhen to learn about the technology, to talk about how to develop their new telephone or communication system of their new country or each country. And they train the people and they go back and they build their new system. Not everything from Huawei because 30 years ago, Huawei don't have everything. They are actually uh, integrating different system from uh, from the Europe, from US, or from from everywhere, because your communication is not communicate yourself. You communicate with all the different country. So that's what I learned from Huawei. And then I say, what are your uh, development people doing? They said we are not developing. They have a department. They told me not developing their uh, communication equipment only. They are having a department, have people to learn each country, what are they utilizing their communication system for their own business? Like today, you're looking at Apple, Palm and everything. So they say how people utilizing the communication system for the future. Media, film, is not the movie theater, a movie star or director. Uh, the theater should not be the theater only. I then I talk to the people who have the theater in China. They say we can only show movie in the theater for 24 hours a day. That's only how many hours you can show a movie because other than that, nobody will go to see a movie there. The real estate are not utilizing it. So they are now start to changing it for a uh, proper utilization for a uh, restaurant, for a uh, sport event and all kinds of things can be util- utilizing the property there. So my com- comment for your question there is, I hope the young people will have to look for the opportunity. Uh, you, you do not look at the whole China. You do not look at the whole world. It, step by step, if you stay in Hong Kong only, the worst thing for Hong Kong is the 50 years no change. Where the other side is 50 years, they keep on changing, improving. So therefore, young people in Hong Kong, in the media industry for film, it's not just the entertainment, but all kinds of things can be utilizing it and keep on changing and improving and learn more about it. I think that's the future for the young people in Hong Kong. I hope I give you a couple cents on my opinion. I hope it will work for the young people. Well, Fred, th- thank you very much. Um, b- before I turn to Tony, if anybody um, in the audience would like to pose questions before we wrap up, um, please do type them in over the next couple of minutes. Um, but I'd now like to ask Tony to talk a little bit about how he sees these 11 cities, very big urban areas already um, evolving, how innovation is going to play a role. We know that China has committed to net zero by 2060. And just last week, Hong Kong committed um, in the annual policy address to net zero by 2050. So what's going to happen to make this a reality and how will that impact the development of cities within GBA? A lot of big questions. So uh, we will start another session for two hours in another room, but (laughs) jokes aside, um, great questions and great to be here. Thank you, Stephen. Uh, As a matter of background, I'm actually Hungarian being in Hong Kong, living in Hong Kong for 10 years. And uh, for the past many years, I've been focusing on technology, innovation, venture capital, and my chosen thesis and vertical is urban tech with positive impact, urban tech with impact. And uh, I realized when reflecting on the greatest opportunities ahead in this particular vertical that actually there wouldn't be many more better uh, cities and regions in the entire world than where I was uh, five years ago, Hong Kong and the Greater Bay Area um, for for to develop a, a, a lab or or to use it as a as an ecosystem uh, to test different technologies in the urban tech area with positive impact. Why do I say this? I stand for cross border innovation and investments, and this region is cross border by definition. 
Uh, there are three different jurisdictions with Hong Kong, Macau, and the uh, Guangdong uh, provinces, nine uh, different cities within the Greater Bay Area concept. But quite frankly, this is, this, this region, uh, is, is not new. This has been cross-border for hundreds of years. I like to, and if you don't mind, I will just, uh, put, put this region's development in, in historical context because this region has been evolving, developing. There has been cross-border business being conducted for hundreds of years. Most importantly, uh, since the Canton system, uh, which, uh, which was, uh, alive from uh, the mid 1700s until the 18 uh, 1800s mid 1800s uh, when uh, the first opium war or through the first opium war uh, hong kong became a, a a british colony now there's a reason why the first opium war happened in this region because this region was the only access between china and the rest of the world uh, trade has been conducted or was being conducted for 100 years only in this particular region. And that brought all the later developments because Hong Kong developed into one of the greatest trading and financial centers in the world. And when Deng Xiaoping uh, started uh, the experiment uh, where, uh, which enabled uh, Shenzhen to become Shenzhen and become one of the most impressive urban development uh, stories in human history that happened partly because of the presence of Guangzhou, Guangzhou's historical uh, uh, strength in southern China, and also the financial innovation and uh, and trading uh, prowess uh, of Hong Kong. At a certain point, uh, two thirds of the factories in Guangdong province were owned by Hong Kong companies. Uh, so that shows Hong Kong's role in the de development of the Greater Bay Area. Now, why do I say this? Because connection between these cities, connection between the different parts of the Greater Bay Area uh, in an international context, in a business and commercially driven uh, context, have been going on for a very, very long time. And as Edward said, you know, going forward, it's not about Hong Kong contributing to the development of Shenzhen or the other way around. Uh, it is about developing an ecosystem. And this ecosystem has been uh, being developed over the past couple of years with even more impetus, with even more commitment uh, from, from business and, and policy as well. And when it comes to urban innovation, that, which is an area I'm focusing on, uh, this region has been uh, remarkable in how it has become connected. And connection is paramount to facilitate business, to facilitate the flow of goods, people, human, human talent, as, uh, as we, as we discussed, is incredibly important in this region, uh, and for the development of Shenzhen, for the development of the entire region. 72 million people live in these 11 cities. So the contributing to the, to the smooth flow, uh, of this amount of people, of this amount of talent, uh, is, is, is hugely important for the further development of, of the, of the, of the region and these cities. And we are indeed not lacking, uh, highly innovative urban development examples, such as the, uh, the Zuhai Macau, uh, bridge, uh, between Hong Kong and these other two, uh, cities, which is an engineering marvel. We, we are not lacking, uh, the, the great example of Shenzhen, which is uh, who's developed their entire mass transportation system to be fully electric by the end of last year. Truly remarkable. As Edward also highlighted, there are a couple of leading urban tech companies in the world right in these cities, uh, starting from uh, Huawei, ZTE, BYD, DJI, but even eHang, which is uh, a, a remarkable innovative company for uh, urban urban air transportation, uh, flying taxis, if you will. So all these companies are located here. All this talent is here. Capital is here. Policy is supporting this development. And I'm extremely optimistic for, for, for urban tech to find its home in, in these cities and in this region because we are both in China, which is one of the fastest urbanizing and most innovatively urbanizing market and country in the world with huge opportunities. 
obviously very hungry for innovation from all over the world, but we are also part of the international uh, ecosystem through Hong Kong and Macau. So whatever examples are being developed here can be implemented in both directions. Great opportunities. Now, uh, the, the net zero or the carbon uh, neutrality uh, as a commitment from China and now also uh, by Hong Kong uh, is, is another amazing opportunity because obviously no market, no innovation ecosystem in the world, uh, even as uh, considering the size of China's and how considering how innovative China's technology companies are and urban tech companies are, none of uh, these markets ecosystems are capable of uh, 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 neutralizing, uh, decarbonizing these markets or any markets. But China's decarbonization target and opportunity is one of the greatest in the world. So I see personally an opportunity for carbon tech companies or companies with innovation and technology that can contribute to the decarbonization of industries, of cities, to actually come here and try to participate in that process because there is hunger. There, we all know that to decarbonize the world, the commitment now is there, which is the great first step. Awareness was the first step. The commitment is the second step. But the technology and innovation that enables us to get there is not yet there. It's not scaled yet. And it's an incredible opportunity right now for all foreign companies to come here and participate in that process. Because once again, the commitment is there. Uh, the opportunity is there and now the capital will be also flowing into this space so as a as an investor minded in, individual i'm i can't wait to see more great companies coming to this region uh, and and help in this process great tony thank you and um, we've got a question from benjamin butler um, and i'm going to pick on winston to have first stab at it um, what, what are the barriers for the development of GBA? What might slow it down and how might those barriers be overcome? Well, I think the, the greatest barrier is really uh, Hong Kong, mainland China integration. Uh, I think there is no no great wishes by Beijing that Hong Kong can be in a greater, more integrated uh, to mainland China for both the benefits of, of China as a whole, including Hong Kong, including the people of Hong Kong. If, if we can just, you know, just take a slight detour, I think it is not an exaggerated to say that the rise of China as we see today as a, a really global powerhouse was catalyzed by Hong Kong. It's unclear whether you know, uh, China could really achieve all it's achieved without you know, all, all the resources Hong Kong had. But I think as much as China has evolved dramatically in the last 40 years, Hong Kong has looked has lived in the past rather than the future. Hong Kong has looked at its past glory rather than the, the renewed role that it can play in the future of itself and, and China. And I think that has a lot to do with, as Ed said in a preparatory meeting, in the mentality of the people of Hong Kong, including many of my friends, you know, my peers in Hong Kong. So, um, so really, I'm sorry to say it, 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 what I say now would not be you know, pleasant to you know, many of my friends and peers in Hong Kong, but many of them and the young people, their, their mindset is the greatest impediment to, to greater, you know, uh, greater you know, Bay Area integration. Okay. As so often in life, mindsets and an impediment to many things. Um, we've got four minutes left. Um, I'm going to ask each of you, what is your top tip um, for a company um, outside Hong Kong, outside China, um, to get um, involved in GBA? Um, I'll start off with 
um, invest Hong Kong. Um, as a department of the Hong Kong government, we offer support to any company that would like to take a look at Hong Kong, Greater Bay Area. Um, we will be having a dedicated Greater Bay Area team. We'll be working with our counterparts in the other 10 cities um, to come up with joint propositions and also a wealth of information on our website. So if we could help, do get in touch. Um, but maybe I'll go in reverse order um, this time. Tony, what, what's your top tip? My, my first tip for, for everyone and anyone is just to come and visit first. This is an amazing uh, part of the world, extremely diverse. It's actually the most diverse economic cluster in the entire world. So whatever you do, you will find great companies doing world-class job in the vertical, in the area that you're interested in. Uh, talk, learn, show what you want to do, and find good partners. That's what I would like to uh, suggest. Not because it's dangerous to try to do alone. There are a lot of very successful foreign entrepreneurs uh, running great businesses, even over the border. Uh, but it's you can save a lot of time uh, by finding the right partners. And the great, there's a great mindset of partnership here. Obviously, Hong Kong, I'm biased. Obviously, I live here. But Hong Kong is a great place to land and just conduct business uh, across the border. The great thing about the Greater Bay Area is how easy it is uh, to go between uh, different cities. Sometimes I have breakfast meetings in Hong Kong, lunch meetings in Shenzhen, and dinner in, in Guangzhou. And it is all possible. So hugely encourage everyone to just come here, whatever you do. Fred. Um, 30 seconds. <laughs> I think to make it easier, uh, as I mentioned in the past, Hong Kong have been really helping the Greater Bay areas uh, in the early day. And all their manufacturer, uh, when they first started, most of them are all from Hong Kong. And uh, so therefore, there's no shortage of opportunity how Invest Hong Kong, my recommendation is, the five of us, I will find the time that we can get together in detail, see, see what the future we can work together, enabling the young people to expanding, not Hong Kong. Hong Kong is the greater Bay Area. And we still have a lot of opportunity can a partner with the Greater Bay Area and expand much more. And I hope that uh, your Invest Hong Kong department should be a good uh, organizer with us to work with you together. Great. Um, Edward, a late question. Um, in terms of international collaboration with universities and R&D centers, is there a GBA strategy for this? Um, any very quick um, comments on that? Yeah, I certainly think that there's a lot of uh, opportunities for collaborations across uh, research institutions, universities, uh, across uh, different jurisdictions with respect to opportunities in the greater, greater Bay Area. I think the, 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 the really most important element in my view is that uh, everyone needs to have uh, have to develop their own vision about how the Greater Bay Area will look like uh, in due course. Uh, and it's not just about what's going on today, and it's not even about what's going on tomorrow or a year or even a couple of years down the road. It is when you try to imagine how the world, in particular China, and in particular Greater Bay Area will look like, let's say, a decade from now or 15 years, or 20 years. Try to imagine that. You know, my advice is that if you roll the clock back and think about what was Shenzhen 10, 20, 30 years ago, and you fast forward that and multiply that by, let's say, 2, 3, 5, 10, that will be Greater Bay Area of the future. And uh, I, I think uh, that will generate a lot of opportunities, not only for businesses, but also for research institutions who could imagine, you know, what will be the topics that they can start doing right now in order to prepare for that future. And I think that will give a lot of people some ideas 
on where they get started and how they want to create the collaboration across different you know jurisdictions, different countries, and so on, uh, in order to attack some of the toughest and most promising topics of uh, interest to the Bay, Bay Area.